here's the function, question two, um, 15,000 x minus 50 on x to the four. Mm -hmm. And then they say, interestingly, the domain for this is x is greater than 50 and it just keeps on going forever. Usually we're like in between here, like you can see down below. That it's like, threw me off. yeah, it, and that's understandable, right? It's like, that's weird. What am I supposed to do with this, right? Um, we're, we're very used to, um, we're very used to this business. Mm. Well defined start, well defined end, you're good to go. Okay. Especially the fact that they, why did they put the 50 before? Uh, this one here. A lot. This one here. Yeah, because you were, t you were pointing in your hands infinite in that direction and you're pointing towards the 50 and I was like, oh my god. Yeah, that's, um, Why I'll, put the 50 I'll, on the other I'll, side? I'll wear that one. Okay. So, oh, on. so no, 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 it's, well, look, it's, uh, <laughs> who else is going to say this was it? I'm so joking. anyway, um, you can see here, um, when we then say for this particular guy here, mm. when you look at something like this, mm. you're like, okay, start at 50 and then go to the right until you hit 60. That's mm. fine. Right, so you get an integral um, for so it's gonna be this really, question really, here. Really small. Um, well, turns out it's. Um, I think I've done the question just up here. Oh yeah, I guess so. Yeah, it's pretty small. Two on twenty-seven. That's what you end up with. Because you're like, if I'm going to go to all the way to infinity, yeah, oh, yeah. Good, jo good job, brain. <laughs> um, so there's there's the integral that we're going to have to evaluate, mm. and then and that's what you can see I've done over here mm -hmm. on the um, on the right hand side. Um, I went and worked out like if you recall. This is where you turn it into a log, and it was like, uh, no, it, it, actually you try it and it doesn't work out for you, it didn't right? Work out at all. Yeah, so, so this is me going through the process of just working out what the primitive is, because I'm like, wow, this is so much work on its own. I, I set that aside, yeah. right? And then I, I you know, like, like I mentioned before, I'm gonna have to put numbers into this function, mm. and I'm gonna have to chuck them in here. So I'm like, uh, I want to make this as simple as I possibly can. Mm. And so um, all, all of these, oopsie daisy, um, all is of... Not, is that not simple for you? Uh, what's not simple? You, you put in more keystrokes for yourself. You mean to get to here? Yeah. Um, no, I'd argue this is less keystrokes than like okay, this. Sir, don't worry. It's my low IQ. Because I looked at the still not integrated one. <laughs> <laughs> you're talking about you're talking about this one. Yes, I am. You're like, oh, this is terrible. Why are you making things worse? <laughs> That's that would be nice. I've been sleepy for two days straight, but I've been sleeping good, so I don't know what's wrong, sir. Genuinely, might start drinking coffee again, uh, <laughs> even though I quit that because I built a reliance. Uh, do you, yeah, it's, that's dangerous. Yeah. Um, okay, so anyway, yes. Um, I did. Yeah, I have to go through those lines mm -hmm. just just for my own sake, and like I'm looking at myself and thinking. I am so going to get those double negatives wrong. Like, it's just a bit of a mess. Um, and I actually, if, to make you feel better, right? You did the mistake of leaving out the one to 50. I, I, I made mistakes and I was like, oh, okay. And I was like beating my head against the wall and I was like, ah, it's because actually the reason why was I was trying to do a lot of this in my head. They really and that's what caught me. They de really de de the situation, I'll say that. I'll say Is that, that a good thing or a bad thing? A very good thing. Okay. It makes it, makes it reachable. That's, yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? For sure. Yeah. Oh, he's not a wizard. Yeah, no, it's not. Um, <laughs> not <laughs> okay. closely related. So anyhow, once I get my, um, this is my primitive function. It's the thing that I'm yeah. going to put my upper and lower boundaries in, whatever they happen to be. Mm -hmm. And you can see if we come back to the original question, it's like, oh, here's a um, here's a boundary, here's a boundary, here's a boundary. So all of these guys are going to get put into right. um, this guy here. Does that make sense? So I write it once and for all. It's nice and simplified. Well, it depends because you're gonna uh, the first one and. This yeah, it depends. Yeah. C is going to be different. Ah, okay. Good, good pickup. So you notice because I've written it in this form, if I go back to the top here, because I've written it in this form without thinking about a particular question with particular boundaries, I have to write it as an indefinite integral, mm -hmm. right? And you're like, oh, this indefinite integral, uh, I, I'm going to end up with this plus, this plus C, right? And you can't, you can't get rid of it, right. okay? However, I then can take that primitive and say that everything I'm about to do I'm going to evaluate it with uh, boundaries. It's going to be definite integrals all the way. And so when I put in, like for example here, um, when, I do, when I do this line here, mm -hmm. right? You can see I've gone to the next line. You're like, where did my plus Cs go? You know, did you notice they disappeared, right? Yeah. Um, there's, no, there's no plus Cs here. And it's kind of sneaky. The reason why I'm just going to put this to one side now. The reason why they disappear is because I am, I am being slightly cheap and um, I'll show you what's going on here, right? Um, this f of 60, 
capital F of 60, I should say. That's me evaluating the primitive function at 60. So that's why you can see that's this line in here. Can you see the 60 up here? Here and here. Right. You see me evaluating? Yeah. Um, and then the other one, uh, let's pick up every color. This is F of 50. Right? Yeah, and you can see it, right? You can see the 50s appearing uh, down the bottom. Uh, not to be confused with, sorry, right color. Not to be confused with this 50. That 50 was there as part of the original of course, yeah. primitive, right? But you can see there's a 50 there, there's a 50 there. The bracket. Exactly. Now, you're like, hey, what's up with the fact that your plus C's are not there? Well, even if I put them in, <laughs> they get, they get cancelled. You see that? Right? Which is why, in definite integrals, we just forget about the plus C. Because the plus C appears twice, it gets added, then it gets subtracted immediately. Yeah, even, even if there's zero. Exactly. The plus C could be yeah, anything could you like, yeah. right? But it's the same plus C on the upper and the lower bounds, so that's why they always cancel. Like exactly. Yeah. Precisely. Ooh, cool, cool. So, um, that's how we get this answer to over 27. Mm -hmm. um, just bringing this back a little bigger. Part B is exactly the same. Because if you have a look here, um, well, I might as well just leave that there. Uh, if you have a look at this one here, mm -hmm. um, they're just saying, oh, same idea, but less than 75. So it's going to be the integral. Again, you start at 50, because that's the, the lowest value for which the probability density function is defined. Start at 50, and, and, and then you just go up. We start doing fun stuff with that here, where we're like, oh, 25, and then the distance of 25. Um, so, we could say from 50 to 25, that distance is 25, right? Sorry, from 50 to 75. It's yeah, it I mean, doesn't. What you call, that, call it something. Hold yeah, on. so it starts with a U, when uh, it's all knows it's the same, uniform? right? Uniform, yeah, yeah, perfect, perfect. So, when you have a uniform distribution, mm -hmm. you can just say, you know the height, you know the width. It's just, it's just a rectangle, man. But, oh, yeah, it is <laughs> right? It's just a rectangle. So, length times spread. <laughs> Didn't even think of that. <laughs> uh, but this guy here, this is very emphatically not. A nice neat rectangle. Mm. This is some garbled mess, and I'm like, I don't know what that's. That's why we're gonna have to do it manually. So precisely, yeah. Um, okay. The other one was 65. You already explained it with what's her name? With Jermaine, yeah. So, so here is me doing the working cool slightly name, neater. Jermaine, yeah. It's a cool name. It is. So, so let's have a look at this, right? So, they ask us for this probability greater than 65, right? right? But you're like, hold on a second. If I just say on a number line, for example. Mm -hmm. On an underline, my probability density function, um, I know it starts at 50 mm. and it can just keep on going, mm. right? So if you ask me for less than 60, right, you can see, oh, it's gonna be it's gonna be this entire stretch within here, this interval, right? You've got a 50 on one side, you've got a 60 on the other. There's more than 60. You're yeah, like, oh, you're wait. like, wait a <laughs> second, right? Then at this point, you're like, oh, it's bigger than 65. So you're like, oh. There's nothing stopping me from just going forever and ever and ever. This is where critical thinking helps because the shape is going right. to be zero. So right, right. So that, that's, the, that's how I did it here, right? Mm. Since that function is going towards zero, mm. right? Even though you can't put infinity into it, mm. you can recognize the fact that it's, it's going to behave like zero, okay? So therefore you get top boundary, lower boundary, and then off you go, you get this value, okay? Um, Alternatively, and I, I like this way of thinking, it just ends up being slightly more working out. Yeah, you, mm. No? No, no, yeah. You just... Yeah, no, yeah. This is a practical application to that one philosopher's thing where it's like halfway, 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 halfway. You're not going to get there. Zeno's paradox. Zeno's paradox. This is uh, the practical application to yeah. Zeno's paradox. That kind of blew my mind for a second. I was like, whoa. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, yeah, keep going. No, it's cool, isn't it? Yeah. Um, now, you can go ahead and give it a go and show that if you approach it the other way, mm -hmm. you can say the total probability, every probability added up, like mm -hmm. the sum of all those probabilities will equal one. Mm -hmm. And I know this function, it, it exists for anything from 50 onwards, mm -hmm. right? So therefore, if I say from 50 to 65, and then from 65 onwards, that should be everything. I should have caught everything in that, right? It's one. And that's why you get a total of one. Um, and all I, like this is the thing here. This is my actual thing that I want, yeah. right? Yeah. A little bit. So because that thing there is what I want, what I do is you can see I've subtracted this term from both sides. That's how it ends up over here, right? Mm -hmm. And this guy here, this just, this does turn into an integral with a nice lower boundary, nice upper boundary, and then you just evaluate it like you did before. Okay. And um, there is some, 
there's some fun calculator work in here, which I, I didn't want to labor, uh, but you do end up, I, I double checked it on, on um, a computer, um, you do get the same answer both ways, which is nice.